Hi, my name is Brian Smith, and this is part three of my Rel for Edge video series. In video one, I created a Rel for Edge image using the Image Builder and built a container to serve the image over HTTP. In video two, I built a new Rel for Edge system using that image. In this video, I'll create an updated image using the Image Builder and then go through the process to update the existing Rel for Edge system that I created in video two with this newer version of the image. To start, I'm on my RHEL 8.3 system with the Image Builder, and I've logged into the web console. I'll click on Image Builder in the menu on the left. I'll then click on the Edit Packages button for the blueprint RHEL Edge Test that I had originally created in Video 1. In this example, I'd like to remove the corn shell, so I'll click on the Remove button. And then I'd also like to add the Z shell, so I'll search for ZSH, and then click on the plus sign to add it into the blueprint. I'll then click on Commit review the changes, and then click on Commit again. Next, I'll click on the Create Image button in the upper right part of the screen. I'll set the image type to RHEL for Edge Commit. Because this new image will be an update for any RHEL for Edge servers running the previous image I created in Video 1, I'll need to specify the previous image's hash as the parent commit. I can find this hash by running RPM OS tree status on the existing RHEL for Edge system, or I could also look at the compose.json file in the previous images tar file that was created by the image builder. Next, I'll click on create and then click on the link for the queue to see the status. On my system, it takes around 10 to 15 minutes to build the image, so I'll skip the video ahead until it's been completed. Okay, the image build completed successfully, and I'll go ahead and download the image commit tar file. I'll switch over to a terminal where I'm logged in as the unprivileged Brian user account. I'll run Podman PS, which shows the container serving the original image that was created in Video 1 is still up and running. I'll go ahead and stop this container with a Podman stop command. I'll make a new Edge2 directory, cd into that directory, and move the image commit tar file that I just created and downloaded from the image builder into this directory. Next, I'll extract the image commit tar file. And then I'll show the contents of the compose.json file. Note that this image has a new OS tree commit hash. I can also run RPM OS tree DB list against the updated image and verify that the Z shell and Tmux packages were added by the image builder, which they were. Just like in the first video, I'll be adding a kickstart file into our container that will be served over HTTP. This is the same kickstart file that was used and explained in the first video. Note that this kickstart file will not be used when we update our existing RHEL for Edge system. However, it would be used if I were to build a new Rel for Edge system using this image. I'll also use the same exact Docker file that I used and explained in the first video. This Docker file will build a container based on the Red Hat UBI8 image and takes the image commit tar file and kickstart files as arguments. Next, I'll build the container image with Podman build and name the image Edge HTTPD and then the first eight characters of the image commit tar file name. I'll pass the image commit tar file as the commit argument and the rel for edgeks as the kickstart argument. This will take a few minutes to build the image, so I'll go ahead and skip ahead until it's been completed. Okay, the container image was successfully created, and I'll now create a new container with the podman run command. The container will be named edge dash, and then the first eight characters of the image commit tar file name, and I'll forward port 8000 from the host into the container's port 80, and use the container image that I just built. At this point, I've created the updated image using the Image Builder and created a new container image and container to serve the updated image over HTTP. I'll now switch over to a terminal where I'm logged into the RHEL for Edge system that was created in Video 2. I'll sudo to the root account and run RPM OS tree upgrade minus minus check, which shows that there is an available update. I can get some additional information about the update by running RPM OS tree upgrade minus minus preview which shows that the KSH package was removed and the ZSH package was added. To initiate the upgrade, I'll run a RPM OS tree upgrade. And once that's completed, I'll go ahead and run an RPM OS tree status. Note that there are now two deployments listed. The second one with the asterisk is the currently booted system, and the other one at the top is the upgraded image that removed KSH and added ZSH. The order of the deployments shown is the same order that they will appear in the bootloader, and the top deployment will be the one that's booted by default. Note that when I ran the RPM OS tree upgrade, it did not make any changes on the currently running deployment, and in order to activate the new image that has KSH removed and ZSH added, 
I'll need to reboot the system. For example, if I run which ZSH, it's not found because no changes were made on the currently running deployment. So I'll go ahead and reboot the host, and when the system boots, the bootloader will show both of the deployments that we saw in the RPM OS tree status output, and it's going to default to that new image that was at the top of the list. Okay, I'll go ahead and connect back into the rel for edge host now that it's been rebooted. I'll sudo back to the root account and run RPM OS tree status. Note that the asterisk, which indicates the currently booted deployment, is now on the commit hash that starts with 807c5, which was the new image where I removed KSH and added ZSH. Also note that the previous deployment is still available, and in a future video, I'll cover how we could roll back to that image if we needed to. I'll run which ZSH and confirm that the Z shell is now available, and run which KSH, which confirms that it was removed. Well, thanks a lot for watching this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.